Park in Gloucestershire, which was once surrounded by really impressive, formal, 17th century Dutch-style gardens. Much of the original layout has now been lost, but there are still some small, formal, enclosed spaces like Sphinx Court and Fountain Court, which give us a flavour of the past. In areas like this, where there's lots of paving, as with our patios and terraces at home, it's great to add pots full of colour, to really soften the hard landscaping and to add colour and interest. Planting them up in autumn with bulbs for spring colour is especially effective, and that's what Piers, the head gardener, is going to show us today. So Fountain Court is a space that really benefits from lots of pots filled with planting and there are collections of pots in the corners of this space and there are also two pots either side of this door. So Piers, what do you usually plant in these? So Durham is quite synonymous with Dutch gardening so we want to put some tulip bulbs in and just really brighten up this space in the spring. This is Helmar variety, uh, it's a very traditional Dutch style head of a, a tulip, like you'd see in 17th century Dutch paintings. I can see a, a pop of colour in spring is going to be really nice. So what, what colour are the tulips that you've gone for? So they're probably a bit garish. They're a very yellow and very bright red. But if you think of the historic attitudes, that would have been actually really interesting and something they'd love to have seen. Yeah, and you've got lots of that sort of tulip in the borders, haven't you? So we have huge tulip displays throughout the spring, all throughout our borders, and that's part of our succession of planting that we, we, we do in our borders. Uh, and again, there are lots of bright, vibrant colours, and they really draw the eye. So what I want to do with the pot is fill it with some compost first. Yep. Um, we always go peat free. OK. So I'm just going to fill the base of this with some compost, but we want to make sure that it's still free draining. Now this pot conveniently does already have one hole for us, okay. so that's where our moisture can drain out so we don't get any water logging. And we just use a broken bit of pots that we can put over that hole, stops our compost falling through the hole, but also lets the moisture drain away. OK, so how, um, how full are you going to fill it? Uh, so uh, you've got to think about the overall depth that you're going to put your bulbs in. You don't want them right at the bottom because the root comes out the bottom of the bulb, so it needs some compost. My rule of thumb is two and a half times the bulb depth. So that essentially is about six inches is what we're looking at here. So I want to make sure that I'm coming up to about where the bulb will sit and then I'll continue to yeah. fill it with, with soil. Okay. So because this is a pot display, we want loads, as many bowls as possible really, don't we? Is that all right to cram them in? Uh, yeah, that should be absolutely fine in the pot because we're not worrying about uh, future successions on year on year. So it doesn't matter if they're all competing against each other because we really directly water pots and we feed pots and we give them what they need. Yeah. Whereas out in a border, you want to spread them out so they're not all competing against each other. So like I said, putting them quite close together, I'm also standing them upright. You can see this is where the shoot will come yeah. from. Really obvious on a tulip, nice and easy. Uh, yeah, it's not so obvious on other things, is it? Like gladio, like corms and things like no, that. It can be quite confusing on some, so um, we do like to put, point them up. Putting in the compost right on top of the bulbs, not pushing it down, just covering it all over. And the reason we want our bulbs at a depth is if they're too high, they might come out too early and then they can get late frost damage. If they're too low, they just might not come out at all because they're too deep. OK, so really, that, you could call that finished, but if you want to add some other winter bedding for interest, you can, can't you, um, at this stage? And um, I know you were planning to add wallflowers. Yeah, so these pots are going to be out throughout the winter. Obviously, the flowers won't come out till the spring, but it's good to have a little bit of greenery that takes us to that point. Wallflowers are perfect because they can sit out in the winter and then they'll flower at the same time as when the tulips come out. So I'm just using my fingers again, making holes for them, not putting them any deep, just dressing them to the same level as what I put the soil. OK, and three is going to look a little bit bare now, isn't it? But they'll soon fill out, won't they? Yeah, yeah, they'll fill out. The wallflowers will grow out a bit and when the tulips start coming up, they're really going to have the impact. 
Dwarf wallflowers are the best for pots because they're not getting too tall, so they're actually about the right height that we want. That sounds great. Well, I'll leave you to plant up the other one and then I look forward to coming back in spring and uh, seeing how they're doing. And there are loads of National Trust properties all over the country that use bulbs and bedding to plant up containers for a wonderful spring display. National Trust gardens are a great source of inspiration and our gardeners and volunteers are always happy to talk. So why not come along to one of our places or get a copy of the National Trust School of Gardening from one of our shops. Music